Tailoring a vaccine to those over 65 depends on recognizing why they are so susceptible to the disease, which, in the United States, has killed more than half its victims in nursing homes. Just as the skin starts to wrinkle and sag with age, the body also starts to lose its physical mechanisms for clearing foreign particles from lungs and airways. This puts a higher burden on the immune system, especially its ability to produce antibodies that glom onto viruses and neutralize them before they penetrate cells and turn them into virus factories. The partial results Moderna released this week highlighted the fact that 8 of the 45 subjects, all under the age of 55, produced neutralizing antibodies against the coronavirus. Older people, however, generally don't produce as many neutralizing antibodies in response to vaccination. One strategy to compensate for this is to give them more antigen. A flu vaccine for older adults, for instance, contains four times the dose as a typical shot. There's a second hurdle that a vaccine for those over 65 will have to clear. Although the ability to induce neutralizing antibodies is one of the main metrics that scientists and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration look at in judging a vaccine candidate's prospects, eliminating an infection from the lungs will require recruiting a second branch of the immune system that involves killer T cells, a special type of white blood cell that can destroy infected cells and halt virus replication. Unfortunately, modern vaccines aren't as good at stimulating this arm of our immune system, which is why vaccine additives known as adjuvants become key. The Shingrix vaccine against shingles, approved in 2017, was a rare win that proved to be nearly 90% effective among people aged 70 or older, thanks to a novel adjuvant isolated from the Chilean soapbark tree that ramps up T-cell immunity. For older people, you need both arms of the immune system working to prevent serious complications, McElhaney says. Adjuvants are the black magic of vaccine development. Their immune-boosting effects help a vaccine work, but they can also, in rare cases, cause dangerous reactions, which is why manufacturers tend to be conservative with them. According to the Milken Institute, more than 140 potential vaccines for the coronavirus are in development around the world, and many will likely resort to aluminum-based adjuvants, old standbys that have been around since the 1920s. These adjuvants increase the amount of time an antigen is present in the body, buying more time to produce an immune response. Moderna's adjuvant is a lipid nanoparticle that encapsulates the short-lived mRNA, keeping it from degrading too quickly. Ofer Levy, director of the Precision Vaccines Program at Boston Children's Hospital, believes we need to work harder to identify the optimal adjuvants for a COVID-19 vaccine before a raft of clinical trials launch this summer and fall. Doing so is traditionally complicated, historically, most adjuvants are tested in rodent cells, which don't necessarily reflect what happens in a typical human cell. And when a vaccine fails to be effective in clinical trials, it's often hard to surmise whether the antigen or the adjuvant led to the downfall. Levy's group, however, has the ability to test hundreds of thousands of vaccine adjuvant combinations using fresh blood cells from people of all ages, including newborns and older adults. We do things completely different from everybody else, he says. The idea is to identify adjuvants that will produce the strongest, broadest, and most long-lasting response with the smallest amount of antigen, in all age groups. Levy's group is working in partnership with several biotechnology companies, including Execure in Skokie, Illinois, and Avidia Technologies in Baltimore, to help develop vaccine formulations that will be safe and effective in all age categories. He is also in talks with Moderna, which has abandoned the highest dose it tested in people after it produced systemic immune reactions, such as fevers. The company may need to explore adjuvant strategies to produce the most robust response in older adults with lower dosages. Moderna did not respond to requests for comment, but it has plans to test its vaccine in people up to age 70. Prior to the recent results, Moderna's chief medical officer brushed off concerns that it will be less effective for those over 65. The harried timeline of Operation Warp Speed means there will be limited information about how long immunity from a vaccine lasts and whether it is safe for seniors in the long term. Vaccinating 300 million Americans with Moderna's vaccine could cost tens of billions of dollars, a huge gamble for the country and a sizable payday for the company. If it turns out the vaccine protects you for two months, that's not ideal, says University of Pennsylvania's party. 
In the absence of a highly effective vaccine, the quality of life for older adults will largely depend on the successful development of COVID-19 drugs that directly attack the virus. Earlier this month, the FDA issued an emergency authorization for Gilead's experimental drug Remdesivir, which has only demonstrated a modest effect in helping hospitalized patients recover faster. But scientists are also testing a wide range of pre-existing drugs and new compounds. A second line of defense could come from commercial monoclonal antibodies, though these are likely to cost hundreds of dollars a dose and would have to be re-upped every couple of months. One vaccine-like defense on the horizon involves circumventing the frail immune systems of older adults by injecting the genetic instructions for making antibodies directly in their muscles and stimulating them to produce the antibodies. The technique was successfully tested in monkeys against the Zika virus, and two Massachusetts-based companies, Generation Bio and Smart Farm Therapeutics, are hoping to deploy it for the novel coronavirus. We call it pop-up immunity, says Timothy Bronze, chief operating officer of Smart Farm. We hold the line until the reinforcements arrive. Scientists are also exploring the possibility that some people may benefit from the live vaccines still used for certain diseases in other countries, and from exposure to infectious diseases such as malaria. I'm not sure that there's going to be one vaccine that is going to work with equal efficacy, says Liu. Some may be more effective not because of the vaccine, but because of the population. While the first approved coronavirus vaccines may not be fine-tuned for older adults, Lou and McElhaney say they still stand to benefit. As younger people get vaccines, herd immunity will eventually take hold, shielding those over 65 better than the vaccines cut. For older adults, then, the pandemic will not come to an end with the bang of another White House press conference, but with the whimper of one more child getting stuck with a needle.